Hey there, I'm eating a no-bake Canuck Nanaimo bar. Now, Nanaimo bar gets its name from the city of Nanaimo on Vancouver Island, where I lived a long time ago. And Nanaimo is famous for two things. One is a very wacky, crazy bathtub race across the Georgia Strait over to Vancouver, which comes once a year, but all year round, you can get these fantastic little Nanaimo bars. Chewy, creamy, chocolatey. Everything you could ever hope for in a bar. Oh, it just, you go through the layers of flavor. So, let's go make some in the kitchen right now. So, for our first layer of the Nanaimo bar, the bottom layer, what we have here is a half a cup of oats rolled oats, a half a cup of walnuts, and those are like the walnut pieces, or you call them, sometimes get them as baker's pieces, one and a half cups of shredded dried uh, coconut. Over here we have five tablespoons of cocoa powder, uh, one egg that's been beaten, beaten well, a quarter cup of sugar, and you can use either white sugar or like I'm using here, cane sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a half a cup of butter. So what we're going to do is first we're going to start up the uh, small pan here, put on low heat, get that butter melted. If you got it really low, we don't want to burn the butter, so we want to melt it. While that's cooking, or melting, we're going to take these, throw them in a food processor. So in goes the coconut and the walnuts and the oatmeal, and we're going to process that. We don't need to... Total fine powder, but we want to get little small pieces. So here we go. All right, so look at that. And that's about right. You just want it like this. Just kind of little pieces, little shreds of coconut in there. That is perfect. All right, bring that off here. And we can set the machine off to one side and get it out of our way. Uh, that butter is melting. Perfect. Clean off the counter while we're waiting. I right, just gotta just keep moving that butter around so it doesn't burn. All right, so all the butter has melted. I'm gonna take that off the heat. And now. First thing, just gonna stir in the sugar. Get that into the butter, starts dissolving a bit. And in goes the cocoa powder. And so I mix that until that cocoa powder gets mixed in there into the butter. Over here. Just get it nice and smooth. There'll be a few small lumps probably left, but that's okay. Uh, when we start mixing this in, that's going to take care of those. Okay, that's looking, getting pretty smooth now. A little bit more of a stir. And in goes the vanilla. And while I'm stirring, in goes the egg. All right, get that all mixed in there. Okay, smelling great in here. Now, I'm gonna take our chopped up mixture of coconut and walnuts and oatmeal and just start mixing that in there. So I'm going to put about half in there first. Get that mixed in. It's going to get really thick in a minute here. All right, get some more in there. Well, basically all of it. <laughs> Just mixing it in. 
And the great thing here is that we can do this all in this little pot, as long as you're careful, and then you don't have to have any other dirty bowls. You know, I'm just kind of cutting it through, just cutting to get all that mixed together. And once it's all combined, now, what I have over here is a nine by nine cake pan, which I've rubbed with butter. So it's just buttered lightly inside there. So in this goes into the pan. And then, just spread that out. Get that off to one side. Spread that out in the pan. Get it all kind of evenly distributed. All right, once we got it somewhat even, grab a fork. Just take the fork and just work it down like that. Just basically tamping it to get it nice and flat and basically an even thickness. And that is looking really good. Nice and dense now, we've packed it all down. Okay, that's the first layer ready. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just throw some wrap over top of this, put it in the refrigerator, and refrigerate it for about an hour. Just wanna get it good and cold and set. It'll harden up and set in there like a nice bar. All right, I'll see you in an hour and we're gonna do the next layer. All right, so. That's been in the uh, refrigerator for an hour. It's good and hard, perfect. That's our base layer ready. Now we're gonna make the second layer. For the second layer, what we have here, we have a quarter cup of butter, a quarter cup of condensed milk, a one half teaspoon of vanilla, and one and a half cups of icing sugar. Now we may or may not use all of that, but we like to have a little extra just to see how much we need. It depends, moisture, humidity, everything. So put about, Get a one and a half cups ready, and we'll see how much we need to use. So first thing we do is cream up that butter. Now that butter is at room temperature, cool room temperature, but easy enough to cream. So I'll just uh, cream down with a spoon here in the bowl. And just want to get it kind of soft. So squoosh it around a bit. All right, once we soften that up a bit, Going to add in the uh, condensed milk. Add in the vanilla. Lick some of that delicious condensed milk off there. Mmm. I love condensed milk and I, I love it in my coffee. I'm doing quite a lot of that lately. <laughs> All right. Okay, now what we do is just mix this. We're gonna mix it until it gets a bit smooth. So it'll be about a minute of mixing. All right, now that's, that's looking pretty smooth. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start adding some of this icing sugar. A little bit at a time, maybe about a quarter to a third at a time. Let's put some of that in there and work it in with the mixer. You can see how it's starting to get nice and smooth in there. Use a bit more. I think it's from the feel of it, it's already feeling a little stiff. We probably won't be using uh, that one and a half, probably about a cup. All right, see that's getting pretty stiff. Take some of that off as holding its shape, it's very creamy. That's perfect, so we used probably about one cup of the icing sugar. Just going to get it up to this where it's like a, a stiff creaminess. Then, we're gonna get it off the beaters. Of course, you always leave some on the beaters for licking. 
Anytime I make cookies or anything, there's always something there on the beaters. All right, now, what we're gonna do now is we'll put the base layer down here, and then I'm gonna put this onto the base layer. Get it all out of there. All right, okay. Now, all you wanna do is spread it out so it's kind of even. You just wanna create an even layer of this. All right, so while I'm spreading this out, what I'm gonna do after I finish spreading this, again, as before, gonna cover it with, uh, gonna cover it with some um, wrap. But because it's a, a thinner layer, it doesn't have to take, it takes long to cool down in the uh, refrigerator. We'll put it in for about a half an hour. You can leave it in longer. Any of these layers can be left in longer. So for example, when you're making that base layer, you can make that in the morning. If you're going off to work, make it in the morning. When you come back from work, you make this layer, let it sit a while, and then you come in and you make the, uh, the final layer, which we'll be doing shortly. In about half an hour, we'll come back and we'll make that final layer. All right, so that second layer has been sitting in the fridge for a little bit over half an hour. We're now ready to make the third layer. For the third layer, all we have is a quarter cup of butter and a third of a pound or 150 grams of uh, chocolate, darker light, I like dark chocolate, chopped up into small pieces. What we're gonna do is we take the butter and we're gonna melt it. So put it in a small pan, get the heat going. And as before, we just wanna keep it a uh, low heat. Don't wanna burn the butter, just wanna melt the butter. So that's gonna take about half a minute or so to melt that butter. I'm gonna break it down to smaller pieces. It'll melt a bit faster. All right, so our butter's melted. Now, with the heat on the very lowest heat, we're gonna add in the chocolate. And we just wanna melt that chocolate just to the point where it's melted. Gotta be really careful with chocolate, it'll burn easily. It is better to do this in a double boiler, but I'm just taking my chances here. You can do it in a little milk pan if you're careful. Just keep stirring it, keep moving around. You see it's starting to melt. Just keep going. All right, look at that. So all the little lumps are gone, basically. We're just about there, it's nice and creamy. All right, I don't wanna push that, so I'll take it off the heat. And right away, we're going to spread it across. So just kind of pour it across, because it's, it's hot, it's going to melt that uh, last layer you put on. So you just want to get it all over the place. And just carefully spread it around. You gotta be careful that you don't touch the, the layer underneath because it's melting. There we go, looking good. All right. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth on top. You want that kind of a little bit of waviness up there. Looks nice when you cut these. So that's it, done. All right, look at that. That is the chef's reward. Mm. All right, what you wanna do now is again, we're just gonna cover this. And this time we're gonna put it for at least an hour in the refrigerator, just let it get good and solid. We're going to come back later on and cut this into squares. I'll show you how we do that without making a mess of it. All right, see you in about an hour. All right, so that's been over an hour in their fridge. So it's all good and hard on top now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into squares, into bars. Now, to make it easy to cut through the chocolate and do this a nice smooth cut, what I've got here is a tub full of hot water. So I'm using my favorite little icing spatula and just heat up the blade a bit in the hot water. And then just carefully push down and run it along. And you see it just slightly melts the chocolate a bit. So heat that up again and we'll keep going. There we 
go. And just keep repeating that, just cutting along. You can either cut this into big, big squares. I like to do a bit of a longer bar. So I'm going to cut this into six pieces this way. All right, now we'll just flip it. Cut the other way. In this direction, I'll just cut it into four pieces. That's going to give them a little bit of a long bar. It's kind of nice. Now the tricky part is always getting that first piece out. So I like to go one of the edge ones here where I can work all around it. And then just hopefully lift up without a lot of damage. And jiggle it back and forth. Oh, it's moving. Okay, and there we go. Success. Well, we have a bit of a mess there, but that's it. There we go. A Nanaimo bar. Oh, mm hmm. And there's just layers of flavor. I love these things. All right, enjoy your Nanaimo bars. Now, if you go to the link appearing on the screen, you can get the free printable recipe for no-bake Canuck Nanaimo bars on our website. So go print out the recipe, have fun making and eating these little treats, and make cooking fun again with Kuma's Kitchen. <laughs>